Hi, this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy. This is a brief video explaining what you get when you purchase our design control procedure, SYS008. This email will come to you automatically after you confirm your desire to uh, subscribe to our automated emails, giving you updates to our procedures for free. Um, the only attachment to this is a design review meeting minutes form. There are some, the combined file size of the other documents is too large, so we are providing hyperlinks to download them from our Dropbox folder. So here are the different hyperlinks. There's the procedure, there's a design transfer checklist, a traceability matrix, a design and risk management plan that's combined, and then there's a bunch of templates for um, user need or product requirements, user needs, inputs, verification protocol, valid uh, verification report, and a risk management report template. Now I'll show you each of those documents. So this, this procedure has gotten much longer than it was before because we've had quite a bit more detail. Um, this is the design control procedure. It's now up to 14 pages. In this procedure, we've listed all the different templates that we are, that are included in this. Matthew Walker has been very busy adding uh, hyperlinks um, and color coding. He's added in uh, blue color coding for each of the clauses in the standard, so it's easy for auditors to find all the regulatory requirements. Um, then when you go further down here, we explain what things we added. Um, throughout the procedure, you're going to see more of these blue references to the different ISO 1345 2016 clauses. And we've added a lot more references to the different templates. So here's a, one of our forms, here's a template, here's another template. And then throughout this, we have more blue hyperlinks and more references to templates. And then when you go down to the bottom of the procedure, and this is all organized by phases. So this is stage four, and then we have stage five, the final stage for product release. And after you get through that, it talks about monitoring and measuring what things to monitor in the design process. You can modify this to measure the things that you want to measure for your own quality objectives. It says who's responsible for um, the process and what training they need to go through. It talks about risk management for the process because we use a risk-based approach in all the procedures. And it talks about the records. And here are all the different records that you would put in a design history file organized by phase. And this is very much a copy uh, from what's also in the design plan. So for each part, we've just recently added all the cross references to the different templates to help people uh, keep track of where, which documents go where and which sections. And then at the end, we have our uh, diagram showing the design process. This is a combination showing the typical phase gate approach plus all the risk management activities that would occur and then major milestones in a typical 510K submission. But these could be replaced with um, European C marking requirements as well, which would be a little bit shifted out because you can you need to submit clinical data for a C marking submission. The next thing we'll go to is one of the templates. So here's a verification report template. This is created by Mary Vodder. She's got in here some software references, but this is a, a very simplified report or, or template, you would add more things in here. We have other templates that have more detail if you need them. Then we have the design review meeting minutes. This would be the same review meeting minutes form that you would use for all the design reviews. We don't have a separate one for each review. We use the same template for each. And then you would indicate what needs to be updated before you go on to the next phase. This is the design transfer checklist. We created this recently uh, to help companies um, keep track of all the things that they need to do during the design transfer process. So the person responsible for each of these milestones to make sure they were all completed, the target date for completing them in the design transfer, and then the date it was actually completed. So we've got um, 18 different items here. And we have included links to templates as well. Next item is the design risk management plan template. This is a device description that you would put in here that would be the same as what you would use as for your uh, design dis device description in a 510K summary, just the initial paragraph, the general description. 
then we have an overview of the project, and then we've broken out each of those boxes as separate box, uh, tables for each phase. And still we have these links for the different documents in here. And then we have explanations about what procedures apply and what goes on in between the phases in between each of those tables. You can see the procedure references. We reference the design procedure here, the risk management procedure, and the usability procedure. And then we say who's responsible for this at the end. The next requirement or next template is the risk management report. Um, this is in here because we have both the um, risk management is integrated with the design process. So we've provided this template as well. We also provide this as part of our purchase in the um, risk management procedure. And it has the different things that are required at each of the phases. And next we have design inputs document. This is one way to describe it um, with a lot more detail. Another way is to use our um, traceability matrix. So we've got a combined design requirements traceability matrix and you could put design inputs here. You could also put hazards or if you need more room, you could just reference the document where it can be found and what line item it is. And then you'd put it in that other document here and indicate what ID it is. So uh, design input uh, number one, two, three, four. So you'd indicate which one it is and would say it's in template 24 or whatever document number you give it. Um, this here is sort of a combination of your input, output, verification, validation, um, IOVV, as well as the hazard uh, risk management documents that you would need. So user needs, hazards, inputs, uh, risk controls, severity of harm, probability of occurrence of harm, or probability of occurrence, it's P1. It's a P2 over here that you would determine after you gather some clinical data. And residual risk, that there's a place to put residual risk that you would link in your um, warnings and precautions in your uh, IFU. And then anything that you link for post market clinical follow-up studies and reports. We also have a user needs document here. Uh, this is a template. And once again, we have traceability with numbers and you ideally want to have these numbers link with the inputs and outputs and hazards. We also have a product requirements document. This would also be another user needs type document, but at, a, at an even higher level, this is more from a business standpoint. And last but not least, we have the verification protocol template. So this says, uh, these are the protocol leading into the report that we showed you earlier. So those are all the documents that are provided in this. It's much longer, has a lot more detail. We provide a lot more templates. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Have a great evening.